Now, a lot has happened in Nepal over the weekend. The controversial map bill has been fast-tracked. New Delhi has offered to solve the dispute through dialogue. Anti-India sentiments have given way to anti-government protests. And Kathmandu has released details of its coronavirus expenses. Now, let's decode these developments one at a time, starting with the anti-government protests. They're on the rise. The Nepal government is under fire for not doing enough to contain the outbreak. It has been accused of misusing relief money and it is responding with force against protesters. The images on your screen tell you the story. Dozens of demonstrators detained in Kathmandu. Among those held were several foreign citizens. Nepal says that foreign powers are apparently trying to interfere in its internal matters. Well, the protests seem to be bearing fruit. The Nepal government was forced to make public the details of its coronavirus expenses. According to the details, the federal and provincial governments have apparently spent 8 billion rupees in dealing with the pandemic. Will this revelation put an end to the protests? We'll have to wait and see. But there's map politics that's playing out as well. Nepal wants to update its map to include the disputed territories of Kalapani, Lipu Lake and Limpi Adura. On Saturday, the lower house of parliament in Nepal unanimously voted in favor of altering the map. 258 out of the 275 lawmakers in this house are said to have voted in favor of the constitution amendment bill. On Sunday, the bill reached the upper house. A proposal to discuss the amendment bill for approval was unanimously endorsed. The discussion is expected to go on for 72 hours and we'll only know the final outcome by Thursday. In the meantime, let's tell you what Delhi has been up to. The Defence Minister of India struck a conciliatory tone today. Rajnath Singh has categorically stated that any misunderstanding with Nepal will be sorted through dialogue and dialogue alone. He used a famous adage to describe India's ties with Nepal. He called the bilateral relationship a roti beti karishta. In simpler words, it's like a relationship between two families. Listen to this. Bharat aur Nepal ke beech ka jo rishta hai ya koi saman rishta nahi hai. Bharat aur Nepal ke beech ka rishta. To mere behno bhaiyo, ya roti aur beti ka hamara yeh rishta hai. The two countries indeed have shared excellent bilateral ties in the past. So how did this political crisis precipitate? And that too during a pandemic. What pushed Nepal to pick a fight with India? Let's look at the timeline of events to understand. It all started on the 8th of May or was precipitated post the 8th of May. The Indian Defence Minister virtually inaugurated a new 80 kilometer long road in the Himalayas. This road was built along the India-China border at the Lipu Lake Pass. Three days later, on the 11th of May, Kathmandu protested. It said that the road crosses territory it claims. It accused India of changing the status quo. It summoned the Indian ambassador to Kathmandu. Nepal's actions were followed by some remarks by the Indian army chief on the 15th of May. Without taking any names, the army chief said that Nepal was doing what it was doing at someone else's behest. A subtle but clear reference to the growing influence of China in Kathmandu. What followed was an endless war of words. The Prime Minister of Nepal unleashed a torrent of invective against India. He took jibes at the Indian motto of Satyamev Jayate, truth, truth prevails. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli said that India was not living up to this motto. It's been less than a month. And now his government is on the verge of passing a constitutional amendment to alter its official map. These are some facts and I want to conclude by talking about what lies ahead. A dispute between India and Nepal will further put the stability of the region at risk. New Delhi and Kathmandu need to think out of the box and find a practical solution without, preferably, preferably without, China breathing down Nepal's neck.